Hi, I'm Mandy Patinkin. Being a parent, being a good parent, is one of the really important things in my life. Children are born without instruction manuals, which is too bad, because they are complicated little beings. Many fathers and mothers learn how to parent as they go along, which is a shame, because you can enjoy your child's birth and growing up much more fully if you're prepared. Many experts believe that parenting education belongs in the classroom. This video will show you some of the innovative programs currently in schools across the nation. Unfortunately, these classes are voluntary and rare, despite their effectiveness. I hope you will join the Parenting Project and me in working to make parenting education universally available in all our schools for all our children. Thank you. Can you see anything right now, Mike, that makes you think he's a comfortable, contented baby? Yeah, well, he seems to like the lights, and um, he, he's not moving around. He looks like he's happy. All these young people are participating in parenting education. The knowledge and skills they learn today will improve the quality of their parenting tomorrow. And by learning about parenting, these students are developing caring and empathy and improving their relationships with their peers and families. These parenting classes are designed to decrease child abuse, reduce violence in our schools and society, discourage teen pregnancy, and improve the mental health of future generations. According to experts, these programs deserve a wider audience. I think that um, parenting is so important that parenting education should be required in schools. If you taught parenting in the schools as required, you would be sending a message that children are very important, children are very precious, and you'll become a more child-focused society. Now go put it in the trash. These high schoolers are role-playing different ways that parents treat their children. Is that the trash? Little girl, if you don't pick the thing up and put it in the trash, I'm going to beat you half to death. All right, let's, let's stop it right there. <laughs> I have to make the subject matter interesting and and the way i do that is is i use their own experiences in life and what it does is it gets them to think a lot about some of the issues of what they are and then they turn it around and they look at, at their own lives the most important thing that i would i would like to see my kids get out of this is that they treat children their own and everybody else's with understanding and compassion uh, and decency and respect uh, if they do that then I think that they're really doing a service to any kid that they run into. Well, I know definitely I am not ready to have a kid because sometimes I could be selfish. You know, I want like to buy things for myself, but I can't be like that if I have a child because they need that to live. In the Houston Independent School District, a program called Parents Under Construction uses videos to trigger discussions of parenting issues among students. Quiet. All right. I felt that so many of the mental health problems that the children and adults in our society are experiencing uh, stems from uh, inadequate and inappropriate parenting skills. And I thought that we could teach children about parenting skills so that some of these mental health problems would be um, reduced or eliminated in future generations. We've done three research projects um, on this curriculum and we've found that the information can lead to changes in attitude. For example, children who may have come to this program uh, having harsh attitudes towards discipline will change, especially the younger children, and they'll learn more uh, mentally healthy and appropriate parenting skills and, and, and feel more comfortable discarding uh, parenting techniques that are not mentally healthy for children. I know this cake looks really good. I wish I could have a piece myself, but you know what? It's for your birthday party, and you have to wait for your friends to come over. You know, Courtney's going to be here, and tu abuelo, tu abuela, we're going to have a really good time. If we can start young and teach children kindergarten through 12th grade the information that they need to know, to become mentally healthy parents in the future, I think our society will see tremendous improvement. The most far-reaching parenting programs in the United States are those taught in family and consumer sciences classes. We start with the roles and responsibilities of parenting, relationship skills, we talk about communication skills, balancing work and family, physical, emotional, social, 
financial implications of parenting then we go on to the ages and stages of child growth and development and of course effective parenting practices several years ago we developed national standards for family and consumer sciences this way we can see the results of what we do they can be measured the baby think it over program has been used in parenting education classes in teen pregnancy prevention by over a million teens since 1994 it includes a computerized infant simulator and extensive parenting curriculum materials each baby is programmed and assigned to a student for 24 hours or longer to teach basic infant care teens learn about responding to distress quickly shaken baby syndrome feeding changing sudden infant death syndrome and how to use car seats the baby think it over program is a reality check for teenagers baby looks like a real infant it weighs as much as a real infant and when it cries it definitely sounds like a real infant but most important it makes the teen behave like a real parent it woke me up about five times just kept waking me up like every 10 15 minutes I didn't get a lot of sleep that night. What we believe baby does is make the teens realize that an infant is going to take a lot more than it gives. Because if you're a teenager and you have a baby, then you realize <laughs> you're not ready for it. Schools and districts that have used the program report significant reductions in teen pregnancy as teens learn to wait before taking on the enormous responsibilities of parenting. When you have it, it makes you think twice, like, am I really ready for this? And you just ask yourself that time, 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 time of year. Although some parenting education is available in some middle and high schools, it is often minimized within a broad life skills curriculum or offered as an elective that reaches few students, particularly boys. All the research I looked at in sociology, psychology, anthropology, all pointed in the direction of the enormous importance of having a caring, involved father uh, in terms of deterring boys from violent behavior. So I was really looking for how do we encourage boys to view themselves as future responsible, caring fathers. and. Uh, I found out about the Educating Children for Parenting program. And I still remember on the train going down to Philadelphia thinking how very difficult it would be to get boys interested in these classes because I knew, again, from my research, by the age of four or five, boys know that anything having to do with babies or dolls is girls' stuff and they don't want to go near it. As we observe what was done today with Brian's visit this month, let us see whether or not we can reflect on the differences of what we saw today and what we saw last month. What about you, John? He didn't feel as though he had a huddle behind his mother anymore. Well, I was utterly amazed to find that the boys were at least as interested as the girls were. It's just as 21 we saw. In relating to the babies or toddlers that were brought into the class. So it really made me realize even more that... Uh, the only thing the boys needed to bring that whole side of themselves out was permission from, from the school, from society at large, telling them that it's really, that it's okay. Both boys and girls participate in Roots of Empathy, a Canadian program that brings a parent and child into a classroom once a month during the course of a school year. The Roots of Empathy program teaches children emotional literacy. That is the ability to identify feelings and give them names. Santa Claus holding a baby, that's what the picture is about. Now tell me, what do you think this baby's feeling? Afraid. Afraid? Sad. Must be sad. Scared. What's happening to make you think she looks scared or frightened? She has a frown. She has a frown. Why do you think this baby might be afraid. She's scared of Santa Claus because she, um, Santa Claus is a stranger and he doesn't, and she doesn't know him yet. When children have gone through the Roots of Empathy program, our hope is that they would become more caring individuals, 
that they would be able to understand how other people feel, to be able to read the cues, but more than that, to be able to be proactive and see how they might be involved in helping. So that we're looking for an awareness within themselves and an awareness of other people, which will build a more caring civic society. Harriet Heath, co-founder of The Caring Project, concluded in the 1970s that caring and empathy are best learned by watching what parents do and learning the sensitivities and skills needed for good parenting. The essence of the Caring Project is to teach children how to care. It also is teaching children how to relate to each other. One way of teaching caring is by partnering, in which older children plan activities for their younger partners. The partnering program in my class, my sixth grade class, um, takes place with Lois Hamilton's first grade. When we start the partnering program in September, uh, the sixth graders are randomly paired up with first graders, and they keep that partner for the entire year. Some partners may work academically with their first grade partners, helping them learn how to read, uh, helping them progress in reading or math. Uh, it's also a very social time. The Friday afternoon is often spent on the playground. The first graders look up to their sixth grade friends. It's beneficial for both sides. I think we as a society have got to learn how to nurture each other. We've got to become a kinder society. The Parenting Project is a nonprofit organization that encourages and promotes programs like the ones you have seen in this video. The Parenting Project's mission is to bring parenting education to all children and teens through schools and youth programs. Susie Garfinkel Chevrier, the founder, tells how the project started. My dad tells the story of being handed a baby by a nurse in a hospital and looking at the baby and thinking, they're going to trust me with it. I don't know how to do this. It doesn't come with a manual. And I know when I hear him telling that story that I'm the baby. And then I think about this a lot and I prepare myself. When I had my first baby, I realized that although the responsibility was overwhelming, I was prepared. And that that preparation needs to be a part of everybody's education. And that's what the Parenting Project does. We promote the inclusion of parenting preparation, relationship skills, and empathy development embedded in the school curricula, kindergarten through high school, for all of our children. You require training and a license to drive a car. Be expected yet, no of parents. I want to be a parent, but I know I have to wait for the right time. You just have to be mature enough to take care of your kids. I'd like to see child rearing classes becoming a regular part of the curriculum in every elementary, junior high, and high school uh, in the country.